Hi, everybody, and welcome to tonight's episode of The Potterverse. Really excited to have you here. Of course, this is the live experience. We highly recommend that you check things out by making sure that you're following the Mary and Blake page. You can, of course, hit that share button below on your walls, on your stories, in your Harry Potter groups, heck, even in your local town groups, because I bet there are some Harry Potter fans in your local town. Yes, absolutely. There, there's Harry Potter do, Harry Potter do, dorks everywhere. That's right. That's right. right. And as you hit that share button, please write in the comments below, whether you're on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, write the um, hashtag, or uh, you could just write Expecto Patronum right here. That's how we know so we could shout you out. So we're going to give you a minute so we could see how many people can share that video. Tonight, we are, of course, talking about Chapter 16, Through the Trap Door. We only have one chapter left of the Sorcerer's Stone after this, and if you are are new to the Potterverse, welcome. We're actually a audio-based podcast that you can find in any podcatcher of your choice. Just search the Potterverse. It's Potterverse is like one word, like the universe. Um, and you can check that out now. We've been going through every single chapter, and our plan is to cover all of the books in this matter. And all the f- films, too. Yes, even, yes. Even the Fantastic Beasts films. <laughs> da, da, da. We'll see. We'll see about that. Uh, but yeah, everybody, thank you so much. Anna and... and uh, Anna and Rebecca and everybody saying uh, Expecto Patronum. You guys are the best. You, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, yes. We've been averaging, I would say, between 17 and 20. I would love to have 30 today, 30 shares. So if we could get if we could get 30 shares today, that would be exceptional. Thank you, so Victoria. If you are watching this on Facebook, Michelle, uh, thank or you. Or if you're watching this on Instagram Thanks, or Alice Twitter, Dave. please do. Have uh, have hit that share button. That would be exceptional because, as always, podcasts grow by word of mouth. So if your friend is watching, or if you're watching this Thanks, and your Susan. friend happens to see it, and your your friend is a is a Harry Potter nerd just like we are, and they happen to catch it, catch in on it, then awesome because yes. they trust you and you trust us. Hopefully, so <laughs> so the best thing you can do is hit that share button, do that expecto patronum, get called out. And let's have some fun. Thank you, Susan. Thank you so much. Victoria, Michelle, uh, Allison, everybody. Thank you so much for hitting that Expecto Patronum button. You know, I'm not sure if I'm ready. I'm not sure if I'm ready for this, Marvin. I'm not this sure. Is, this is quite the doozy of, of the chapters. Um, so, of course, we're going to be delving into this episode. Your experience takes place watching this, but also in the comments. So could you tell them a little bit more about why it's important to keep the chatter in the yeah, comments section? Yeah, absolutely. What you want to do is you want to just talk amongst each other. Now, of course, when we're making this podcast, it, this is really meant for the people who are listening to it in their podcast app. That's the whole idea. But we are doing it live for you, so you get a chance to see what it's like in our little studio and what it's like for us to create a podcast and be a fly in the wall and have that experience. So please talk amongst yourselves in the comments. You guys are all together. Uh, that way, um, those your conversations keep happening and also... Um, if something happens to catch our fancy in the you, comment Gloria. section, Thanks, Rachel. we will absolutely call you out because your voice is just as valid, if not more, than our voices when it comes to the Potterverse because we're all dorks. We're all here talking about Harry Potter on a Wednesday night. So who's to say that so you guys it, shouldn't be featured just as much as us? That's so right. So make it creative. Make it fun. Let's make some bad decisions together. <laughs> and Let's make a podcast. Let's do it. Thanks, Tracy. Hey there, Nerd Clan. This episode of the Potterverse is brought to you by MinuteWithMary.com, your one stop shop for all things beauty and skincare. Speaking of skincare, my brand new eye cream launched this month in August. And for those of you who are a podcast listener of ours, you get to have it at 15% off this month only. Go to minutewithmary.com slash discount. But if you do have any other needs, I would love to help you on out. Just search the hashtag Minute with Mary. You can request to join my marvelous VIP group. It's completely free, and I share tips and tricks there as well as some other deals. But to this month, the big deal, of course, is the eye cream. 15% off. Just head on over to minutewithmary.com slash discount. <laughs> Hello, everybody.
everybody, and from Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to The Potterverse. It's a podcast dedicated to the book and film universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and your time turners. Let's step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. Welcome. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake. Sure is. And I feel like I would have died at the part with Fluffy, even though, like, because I can't play music. Oh, I can't do it. I thought of fear. They'd be, they'd be like, they'd be like, yeah, hey Blake, why don't you uh, play it? Play me a tune, Satchmo. And I would have been like that kid in Outside Providence. Sing me a song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would have been like, yeah, sure. And it, and it would have just angered the dog and we all would have died. That would have been it. I'm trying to think of where I might have gotten stuck. Those of you who are joining us live in the comments, let us know where would have given you the most difficulty in these tasks. I think I would have been okay with the dog. And I think I would have been okay with the devil's snare. I honestly think it would have been catching the key. That would have been the most difficult for me. Have, I have terrible depth perception. It's not terrible. It's the worst depth perception on the planet. <laughs> Seriously, guys, I would not. You do should well. see when Mary parallel Pox. Oof, it's the worst. Luckily, I have she that just pox in the middle of the road. I I do. I luckily <laughs> I have this like beeping mechanism, and it sometimes helps me. She sometimes she, she just pulls right up and she goes, uh, she yeah, we're good. And it's like she didn't Looks even great. move inside. <laughs> She's in the middle of the road. Looks great. <laughs> I thought I was closer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we're talking about chapter 16, Through the Trap Door, and I am so excited. This episode is jam-packed, so much action. We're just, everything's been culminating to this moment, and one of my favorite quotes is in this book chapter and it said by Hermione Granger she says books and cleverness there are more important things friendship and bravery absolutely and it's just so true I mean you get that in this book especially for Harry you know his friends become his family and yes his his braveness and his his I, I, that's just, I mean, that's that's Harry, brave and friendly, right? Yeah. <laughs> In a nutshell. Well, and that's one of the things I think that this book really drives home. One of those themes: what is bravery, and what is what is friendliness? What is what mm -hmm. are relationships? How, how do how do these relationships form when you're so young? And how does how do your personalities? interact with that and uh, i i find that the author in this book really really and really the the series in general because when you think about how voldemort is defeated yeah uh it's because of love it's because All you of need. It, it's because of friendliness and and friendship and and um, sacrifice all the things that he doesn't have. So mm -hmm. I would say not only is it in this book, but it's I think it's a theme that runs throughout the entire series, especially in this book when it comes to bravery and friendship. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Well, let's get into this episode. Yep, absolutely. Re remember, everybody, go to maryandblake.com. Check us out. Mary and Blake, all the social medias while you're over there. Uh, and uh, talk about that for a little bit. What? You're pointing at something. The Google Doc. I want to be able to see what you're doing. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> we do the same thing every time, Marvin. <laughs> every time. Yep. Every time, Pinky. So um, if you haven't been to maryandblake.com, now's the time to check that on out. We, of course, are talking about Potter now, but we've talked about a slew of other movies and shows and books. And, of course, if this brings you joy, if this brings a little Lumos in the Knox that is otherwise known as 2020, please feel free to go to jointhenerdclan.com, otherwise known as outlandercastclan.com. But jointhenerdclan.com for as little as $2 a month. You can contribute to keep this going. We truly appreciate your patronage there. And we're glad that we can be bringing you this content at least twice a week. All right, so let's get into the show. <laughs> there we go. Now we can do it. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. In this chapter, school is wrapping up, exams are happening. Um, they find out how to get past Fluffy because Hagrid already let that slip to somebody in a pub. And they decide to go get the Philosopher's Stone because Dumbledore is missing in action. We get to see potions, flying keys, and wizard's chests, as well as some devil's snare. And our trio ends up becoming a solo. Oh, look at you. Look at you. The trio turns into solo. <laughs> 
Not Han. Not Han Solo. Definitely not Han Solo. <laughs> that scruffy nerf herder. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Let me just play it. For... Hold on. No! There we go. Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so first we start things off, and these these youngsters, these 11-year-olds, are just full into the swing of studying. Because once again, even though they're trying to defeat Voldemort, the worst, most evil wizard of all time, they're still students. Don't you ever feel like that? Did you ever feel like that in school where you had other stuff going on in your life, whether it was relationships of a burgeoning love, or maybe you had a spat with a friend, or maybe you had issues going on at work or with your parents, and yet you were still expected to show up and study for school? Yes, absolutely. It happened Didn't all that the time. Stink. Yeah, it's it sucks. And you try to focus and you try to study and you try to be present, but all you're thinking about is XYZ issue that a decade later you don't remember. No. So you really should have just been studying. <laughs> um, Speaking yeah. personally, that's how I'm able to how to get how to, yeah, how it's to not g- like I was fighting Voldemort. <laughs> There's a lot of things that happen when you're a teenager that you think or or younger that yeah. are super important and they're just not. But none of them are for Voldemort. So we're okay there. <laughs> we're we're all right there. Um one thing that kinda uh, bothers me about this, and I need to talk to you okay, about this. Okay, please. Um, I'm ready. Dumbledore, Book in hand. Dumbledore's absence. Oh, you're skipping over all of the studies. Oh, oh, I sorry. thought you wanted to talk about the exams and the oh. different things they had to do with the teachers. No, Obviously, that doesn't stats matter. For nerds. Stats that doesn't for nerds. matter. Who cares about the werewolf conduct? Okay. Yeah, I mean, really. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, yeah, they, they have all the tests. and, and, and Harry, Harry scan, scar hurts and he keeps having nightmares. Well, well I will say this. Uh, I will say this. The fact that Harry immediately comes out to Hermione and says, I don't care. This, th- what are we doing? Mm-hmm. Like, if, if Voldemort gets the Sorcerer's Stone, there's not going to be a Hogwarts left. It doesn't matter. It, wait, it, who cares about house points and all this? And I love that because it is such great foreshadowing, not only for Harry, but for the rest of them. Hermione's whole arc throughout the the um, the series is letting go of those things that she finds are super important, but mm-hmm. really are kind of trivial. Uh, it, it roots itself in breaking the rules and s- trying to stay the course and stay studious and all that other stuff. But you see her come out of that phase a little bit each time, each book, each film. I mean, even eventually, the seventh book, her seventh year, pretty much her senior year of school, right. she skips. She leaves. That's it. It Bye. shows. Yeah. And that, you, when you start one way. There's the Gryffindor. And then you end a completely other way. That is a character arc. Yes. That is, that is a valid arc for all of us to read. But, so. I, I, but I like that. I, I love that Harry says this. And even Hermione kind of gives in. Well, not kind of, but she does give in here. Uh, and I love what she says. Come off it. Do you think we're going to let you go alone? There's no way we're going to let you go alone. We're here. We're going to do this. Another person that is with them in this process is Hagrid. So finally it dawns on Harry that something was really odd about how Hagrid got that dragon egg. So they go and they ask him a little bit more about how he was able to get Norbert the dragon egg. And he explains to them that it's totally okay. You know, I told them that all you have to do is... You know, I, I'm used to crazy big wild creatures. I know how to put Fluffy to sleep. Just mm-hmm. a little bit of music. This is why you don't trust Hagrid with anything. <laughs> Nothing. Not one iota. I w- it, not even a pair of socks. Sorry, wouldn't do it. This is when he does say, I shouldn't have told you that. Forget <laughs> about it. But oh, yeah, sure. We're just going to forget about that. But they're yeah. immediately like, okay, enough is enough. The situation has got really extreme, and we need to go tell Dumbledore. Now we can land the plane. Right. So, <laughs> that a girl, that a girl. Land the plane, <laughs> Helen. Um, I feel almost cheated mm. by this. Tell me. I just feel. I can't wait to delve into this one with you. I feel. My inner Potter nerd is really going to come out. I know. Well, like here, here are two. Here are two ways that this is going to go down. One. He leaves on purpose uh, to make sure that Harry goes under this path. Two, actually there are three ways. Two, Quirrell writes the letter. That's what I think. And sends 
Dumbledore off to the Ministry of Magic. Yes. But, I mean, like, come on, man. Like, really? What? You really feel like Dumbledore would just hop to at the at the first sight of the Ministry of Magic? I mean, he didn't actually hop to. If he hopped to, he would have evaporated or used the flu network. Yeah, but either way, he's still gone. It said he flew, which technically must mean that he jumped on a Thestral. But either way, right? Either way, he's still gone. I can't gone. picture him on a broom. I can't picture him he on totally a broom. He totally would ride a Thestral. <laughs> yeah, Giddy cause, up. It's because he is Dumbledore. badass. Dumbledore. Yeah, he's Dumbledore. Oh, sorry. He's Dumbledore. You're going to have to edit that out. Okay, fine. No problem. I'll edit it out. There are people who listen to this with their kids. He, Will you actually? He is one Because you're bad slithering, man. so I don't think you're actually going to do it. He's one bad man. If you I'll, don't, I'll say that. we're going to have an issue. Okay, I'll edit it okay. out. No okay, problem. Okay, so continue. He is? He's one bad man. He sure is. One tough cookie. So, and like, it's it's so fabulous, too, to just run around on, on, a, on a Thestral. Like, how cool would that be, man? But either way, or, or, he, um, he just tells them that I'm I'm leaving and just hides out in his closet or something. Like who knows? Like I I, I, I think just, it I, was, I find like it's lazy writing to be honest. I, I see it as Quirrell. So mind you, we learn, gosh, right in the beginning when Harry is meeting Hagrid, that the Ministry of Magic is writing to Dumbledore all the time. Like they're nonstop bothering him. Hagrid even brings it up. So it's enough that Dumbledore has vented to Hagrid, mm-hmm. like the ministry always needs my help. My goodness gracious, he's always being called to them. So for him to have gotten something 10 minutes ago, he got an owl or he left 10 minutes ago, I think it's just too perfect of timing, which leads me to believe that smart Quirrell who would have known that Dumbledore has been asked by the ministry to come all year because all of the staff probably have to hear it in the it, about it in the teacher's room. You know that he's sitting there trying to knit and have his tea and maybe a, a lemon sherbet, possibly. <laughs> and then Listen now we'll to come some chamber in. music, you know? Seriously, he's just there and he's like, oh my God. Another another owl. Another owl from the ministry. So Quirrell easily could just have given him an owl to but get him are you, out. Are you telling me he can't tell the difference between Quirrell and the real Ministry of Magic? I That's what I'm thinking. And yes, I don't think he would have known the difference. I, I think he would have been like another one. Like, think about it. If you had gotten a million messages in a year, you wouldn't have been like, let me analyze how they made their J. <laughs> but they wouldn't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm buying this. It just feels like lazy writing. It, it And... It, there's too much to glean from the text. To, there's not enough to glean from the text to suggest that it was done on purpose. So I feel like it's just we need to have Dumbledore out of the school. Then, of course, the kids explain why to Professor McGonagall. She's like, why do you need him so badly? I mean, he's kind of at a big deal. He's in the Ministry of Magic, little ones. And they say, we know about the stone. We know about the stone. And she right. says he won't be back until tomorrow. And she's like, what are you doing talking about the stone? I think you should just just all go back outside, enjoy the sunshine. It's fine. And he even tells McGonagall, Snape is trying to get it. He sent that note. I bet the Ministry of Magic will get a real <laughs> shock when Dumbledore turns up. Why does McGonagall not have more faith in Harry when he mentions to her the Sorcerer's Stone? I know it's here, guy. I know it's here. There's no way. Oh, no, he says that. To, sorry, he says the Snape bit just to the trio. Professor McGonagall is out of earshot. Yeah, but either way, whatever, who cares? Except Snape pretty much hears him. Yeah. Because he's right there. But before we get into Snape, because I love You the, shouldn't be inside no, 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 on no, a no. day like let, this. Let, let me ask my question first, because I love that interaction with okay. Snape. <laughs> How does McGonagall not believe them more? He knows, and he says it about the Sorcerer's Stone. She's like, yeah, so what? You want to know how? Why? Because it's probably May, okay? And these kids are almost out of her hair. She's done. She (laughs) is D-O-N. D-U-N. She's that done. Whatever. She is so (laughs) done. She's like, get out of here, guys. No, no, no. Please leave. I don't know how. She probably, you know what it is? She knows they hang out with Hagrid. She probably realizes he slipped. Oh, that he's slipping. Yeah. yeah. De- details of slipping. Yeah. Yeah. Because she, so, she knows. Yeah. So she's just like, please just go outside slash leave early. Like, 
can't this can't this beautiful castle just go back to being quiet? And that would there is evidence I think that would suggest that McGonagall does look down on Hagrid because she says to Dumbledore at the very beginning of this book, "Are you sure you should be trusting him?" Yes. With all with with this with with saving a child's life. Um, so yeah, I think you might be right there, Marvin. You might you might have something there. Snape, however, is right there. Oh, this is great. And he says, "Good afternoon." He said smoothly, or yeah. And yeah, they do your look best, at Rickman him. voice. Come oh, on. Oh gosh, I'm terrible at him. Good afternoon. You shouldn't be inside on a day <laughs> like this. He said with an odd, twisted smile. Why does he have an odd, twisted smile? Because he's Snape, and that's what he does. I think he he's actually trying fact. to be nice. Yeah, that, and it's so hard for him to smile because he like, hasn't done it. It's kind of like toothless when he forces a smile. All I could think of now is toothless and Alan yes. Rickman together smile. Yes. <laughs> Slash, maybe he wants them out of here so he can go chase after Quirrell. Oh, and he says, you want to be more careful, said Snape. Hanging around like this, people will think you're up to something. And Gryffindor really can't afford to lose any more points, can it? Be warned, Potter. Any more nighttime wanderings, and I will personally make sure you are expelled. Good day to you. Oh, it's so. Oh, it's like so threatening and th- so damn. Like, ah, uh, what? You you can't even say that word. I can't say that word nope. either. No. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Okay, it's just so nefarious. That's why my mom listens to this. <laughs> Fair enough. There you go. Fair enough. <laughs> um, I, it, it's just so menacing. I like. I like. I love how Snape interacts with these kids, and uh, oh, and right from there, you get the sense from Harry's perspective because we're obviously in Harry's POV that Snape is planning something that he is trying to tell them: stay out of my stuff. But we all know that is not the case. And again, it goes to show you the kind of um, it co- it goes to show you the kind of unreliable kind of perspective that we're getting from Harry. Agreed. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so at least they they get there. They go. They say we can't handle this. We don't. We don't. Can't trust any of these professors. That's it. Voldemort killed my parents. We're taking this seriously. Like Hermione, Hermione and Ron are trying to talk Harry out of this. And this is what I, one of the things that I think is really important is he's telling them like, yes, we tried, but Snape's all over this. He's going to take the stone. And Ron says, you're mad. And Hermione says, you can't. You'll be expelled. And Harry says, so what? Don't you understand? If Snape gets a hold of the stone, Voldemort's coming back. Haven't you heard what it's like when he was trying to take over? There won't be any Hogwarts to get expelled from. He'll flatten it or turn it into a school for the dark arts. Losing points doesn't matter anymore. Can't you see? Do you think he'll leave you and your families alone if Gryffindor wins the House Cup? If I get caught before I get the stone, well, I'll have to go back to the Dursleys and wait for Voldemort to find me there. It's only dying a bit later uh, than than I would have, but uh, because I'm never going to the dark side. I'm going through that trap door tonight. Night, and nothing you two say is going to stop me. Voldemort killed my parents, remember? And then right away, Hermione's like, you're right. Yep, we got to do this. Okay. And she but she makes this comment like, uh, Flitwick told me in secret that I got 112% on his exam. They're not throwing me out after that. Why is she so confident with that? What do you think? Because she knows. Mm. She knows she's the smartest witch. So she's got a little bit of an edge. So And she does have an edge because what she does is a petrificus totalis Poor old Neville. Neville. Poor old Neville, man. All he wants to do is just be like, it, like n- not in trouble. And all he does is get in trouble with these three. I just love Hermione because she speaks to him almost like we speak to our children. Why don't you go back to bed? Yeah. <laughs> We actually did that five minutes before we recorded this episode. That's Why don't you true. go back to bed, little put in? Okay, <laughs> please, please. Get, get in there. You'll be fine. And Neville tries, and he's like, Gryffindor is going to be even in more trouble. And this is when, when Neville really stands up. This is a truly remarkable thing for Neville. Is he was waiting there, clutching Trevor. Like, just there he is. First off, I love that he f- has Trevor. It just but makes me happy he, whenever he, Trevor's with him. And here's something that happens, too. 
Trevor has been something that Neville has chased mm -hmm. all story. Mm -hmm. From from the moment we met Neville, he was chasing after Trevor. Trevor was his goal. That was his thing that was keeping him... Um, th th that was what his focus was. And he has Trevor in his hands at this moment. And he lets Trevor go. He lets him go and says it doesn't matter anymore. What matters now is me stopping these three. He will even fight them. Neville. Neville Longbottom says that he's going to fight this trio. And Ron calls him an idiot. Yep. And he says, don't you call me an idiot. I don't think you should be breaking any more rules. And you were the one who told me to stand up to people. And how amazing is that? Right. To like say, no, I know that I'm not an idiot. I know that I'm doing the right thing because you guys actually taught me that. And I'm not ready to do that against you guys. Yeah. yeah. And Ron comes back with the best Ron answer possible. Yeah. But not to us. <laughs> don't stand up to us. That's so Ron. Oh, man. And oh, I just love Neville so much. So and sadly, Petrificus Totalis. And Hermione apologizes. Like, Neville, I'm so sorry. I don't want to do this to it's you. It's the bless his heart. Bless your little heart, but it, it Petrificus gives Totalis. Gives him a full body bind. That's the end. Goodbye. And then <laughs> Ron suggests they actually kick Mrs. Norris. <laughs> <laughs> let's just kick her can we just kick her and Peeves is there now Peeves I've talked about it before I miss Peeves from the movies I understand that they couldn't fit him in but there he is I'm out on this whole interaction why because Harry is making up a voice from the Bloody Baron Peeves knows what the Bloody Baron sounds like Come on, man. Get out of here I with mean, that. Maybe Harry's really good. It'd at... be like it'd be like you trying to impersonate me. It'd be like you trying to impersonate me. Yeah, but it's different. I don't know. It's different. You and you know it's different. Well, Ron says it's brilliant, so maybe Harry has another skill set of <laughs> imitating voices that we don't appreciate or know. Oh man. So there they go. They're running. He gets his flute out. Such a perfect Christmas gift, Hagrid. Mm-hmm. And I love the symmetry here, the symmetry of Harry uh, getting this gift from Hagrid, mm -hmm. something that happens in the beginning of the book or, you know, towards the middle, uh, you know, quarter-ish or sorry, third-ish of the book. And here it comes back to play uh, an integral role uh, in solving what is happening here. I love and it's not quite a bookend but it might as well be a good bookend and i love me that is a mary and blake media commandment oh, book always ends. give me a good bookend so he plays the flute they jump on in and they land on something where they go past this cold damp air and i loved this word that the author used flump f-l-u-m-p <laughs> Flump, with a funny, muffled sort of thump, he landed on something soft. Flump. Like, just say it. Just say it. Like Even if you're watching flump. this by yourself, flump. flump. You, you can't help but smile. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a Dr. Seuss kind of word. Yes. A flump. And like a character. You know, and, and we there is um, a test here for the trio, as it already is. I mean, the, the first test clearly is getting to see Fluffy. And, and and well, first test is knowing where the door is, right? Mm -hmm. The second test is 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 fluffy, and mm -hmm. the third test is having the guts and the bravery to just go down this hole with no indication of where the end is, uh, no indication of any way down or back up. You're just going down this hole, and that's that. And you have to overcome that. Fear. I don't think I'd be brave enough to do that. I'll be real. I would have been dead already, so it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> You're right. You wouldn't have gotten past Fluffy. So, of course, they end up in Devil's Snare. Um, and the boys, of course, didn't really know that much about it, but she managed herself. And she, of course, remembered um, from Professor Sprout how to how to get take care of it. Um, this is when Ron, though, like, yells at her. Like, because she's like, oh, we need to set a fire. And he's like, you have, have you gone mad? Are you a witch or not? Because she's saying, I can't make a fire. There's no wood. Oh, right. And then she, of course, makes the same flame that she had used to spook Snape back at the Quidditch match when he was trying to stop the curse that that curl was doing. But I, I just, Ron is great because he does have this great sense of timing. And, uh, and the author gives him a, uh, these great comedic lines when he says, 
when Harry says, lucky you pay attention to her biology, Hermione, said Harry as she joined her by the wall, wiping sweat off of his face. Yeah, said Ron. And lucky Harry doesn't lose his head in a crisis. There's no wood. Honestly. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> There's no wood. Yeah. GTFO. But mind you, he's wizard his entire life. So I can, I can give Hermione a break. She's She's just been a witch for, you know. 10 months. Um, one of the cool parts that I wanted to bring out was they could hear apart from their footsteps was a gentle drip of water trickling down the walls. The passageway slooped downward and Harry was reminded of Gringotts. With an unpleasant jolt of his heart, he remembered the dragons said to be guarding vaults in the wizard's bank. If they met a dragon, a fully grown dragon, Norbert had been bad enough. And I just love it that this reminds him of Gringotts mm-hmm. and he gets this intense fear of what would it be like to see a fully grown dragon and of course harry gets involved with the dragons a couple of times later on this series right, right. um and he of course his bravery is able to get him through that and they actually end up helping him which is pretty cool yeah absolutely so we keep going down and we get to where are we next we have they go the, to the the keys the keys this is where mary would really oh, really would fall terrible. apart she would fall apart here <laughs> yes so they can't get out of the door the keys remind them of birds they all three have to climb on these broomsticks and ron is the one that figures out what the key is probably going to have to look like he says it's a big old-fashioned one probably silver like the handle Mm -hmm. so they go on the broomstick and they're searching for everything but of course because of harry's amazing ability um which has come to be of great use as a seeker he's able to see it and together they have to kind of corral. I could just picture like cowboys trying to corral some <laughs> some cows as they're trying to get this key. And what what is very interesting to me is I, I keep trying to figure out did Quirrell did Quirrell repeatedly go through these tasks? Like did he keep trying? Did he make it past Fluffy and get stuck in the devil's snare? Or did he know how to get through that? And then when he got to this bit right here with the flying keys, you know, was he able to get get the flying key quickly? Was he good on a broom? Did he have a special spell? Because mind you, this is a Ravenclaw and this is a professor with Voldemort kind yeah, of controlling him a bit. Body. So I kind of I've always wanted to figure out like, did he do like a little bit, you know, over the course of time until he fully committed to being able to get through all of it or did he just figure this all out my in one gut fell tells swoop? me he just did it in one fell swoop okay when you have the the, the darkest of dark wizards on y- on the back of your head and you're already a, a, a pretty smart guy as it is i feel like this is kind of because snape's stuff. trying to tell him to stop trying to get past fluffy oh, that's a good but point he learned about how to get past fluffy way back when hagrid had norbert and that's the thing why is there such a uh, a, a distinct difference in the timing right so if he figured out how to get past fluffy that long ago why wait all this long well that's what i'm saying i'm wondering if doing this alone if he would kind of like do it little bit by bit if he got past fluffy and then he got stuck in the devil's snare it took him mm. a little while to figure out what that was and then he said oh, okay this is too much yeah, but or, i feel like if maybe, he got caught in the devil's snare he would have croaked because well, maybe he, he would have figured it out but then say he got to the key thing and he was like nope i need to research this and he okay. like climbed back out and figured his way out of there mm. and then maybe researched it like i f- i feel like maybe he was trying it bit by bit when he would get stumped here's a thought here's mm-hmm. a thought um we have in the previous chapter a uh, quarrel saying to Voldemort, please, no, not again, not again. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I can't do it. Perhaps he had to wait for Voldemort to get a certain amount of vitality. Unicorn blood? Yeah. Like, there had to be a certain amount of vitality. Yeah. There had to be a certain amount of life within, or uh, mm-hmm. less, for the lack of a better term, power. That would make okay? sense. Uh, so he had to wait in order for, like, you know, Voldemort to get his mushroom and one up. And then when he does, then he can finally make his move, and that's that. That that may, the logic there would make sense, and yeah. why it took that long. Because aside from that, this is something that eleven-year-olds crack, you know. And Quirrell, being a Ravenclaw, would have been able to figure all of this out. As I said, I think the only tricky thing would have been for him to get past Fluffy, which he knew the answer to, and then also the keys, because that has a bit of an athletic bit to it unless he could do some kind of a cool spell aside from that i do believe he would have known how to figure out devil snare i do believe he would have figured out the chess game as i feel like ravenclaws probably are excellent at chess and i feel like he would have figured out snape's riddle so 
he definitely would have done that. You're and he right. already maybe, he already knew the troll. And maybe because yeah, the troll put was the troll. his. So maybe you're right. Maybe he was just waiting until Voldemort was strong enough. Right. And then he was because it would to make pounce. sense that he had to go and get the unicorn blood like a number of times. So much so that he's like, no, I don't want to do it anymore. Yep. And this uh, was his big chance. He wrote that fake letter to get Dumbledore out of the building, and they're good to go. So they get the key. Wait, hey, here's a thought. Yeah. Here's a thought. Does Dumbledore fake his absence to get Harry on the path to get him to... Because we know what's coming, right? We know that the Mirror of Erised is coming. Yes. Does Dumbledore fake it knowing that Harry is going to run into the Mirror of Erised and that he cannot rely on Dumbledore to make these choices? That's, Harry has to choose his own path. If you're on the I'm not a huge fan of Dumbledore train, choo-choo, that's the stance you'll take. Why would you have to not be a fan of Dumbledore for, to take that stance? Because why is he letting these 11-year-olds potentially die in this pit with devil snare and poisons? Like, literally, they could have had poison in their belly and Madame Pomfrey's nowhere in sight and they're facing Voldemort. I think if he... I think if Dumbledore pretended to be gone, then then I think that's very cruel of him to do to 11-year-olds. Because, and, and here's some more... Uh, evidence to suggest that maybe he did pretend to be gone he gives harry the cloak back and says just in case like it's with an it's a with a wink man it's a wink and a nod yeah just in case yeah yeah i know what's coming so you're gonna need it i mean as i've told you i've been very conflicted during this read through on how much dumbledore is using harry as a pawn himself you know as the bait to get voldemort out in my heart, I would hope that Dumbledore was truly gone because he thought he was being called to the to the Ministry of Magic. Sure, sure. But if your hope if if he's really letting Harry wade into these waters knowing that potential death could happen, because remember, only one can be alive. So maybe he's doing this thinking Harry will end him. Because Voldemort isn't necessarily alive in this form. You know what I mean? Right. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm very conflicted. Dumbledore conflicts my heart. And it there's also like this. All right. So I, I don't mean to get religious about all of this, right? But here here's here's something. Someone you, you'll talk to someone about God, and they'll say, you say, well, why does God do this? And the a person who is very religious will more than likely say because. Well, God doesn't need a reason. He just he or it or whatever just does things. And they're in, the, the, the God is in full control all the time. I just, I have that same complex here. Like, why does Dumbledore need a reason to do any of this? Because he doesn't. He just does. And there's a complex of knowing how much Dumbledore really knows and how much of this is engineered, how much of this is architected by Dumbledore. And if that's really the case, how much freedom does Harry have within that architecture? Well, here's my thing, is that where's Snape during all of this? Because if Dumbledore has tasked Snape to watch Harry, why isn't Snape, like, hiding somewhere, ready to save well, him? Well, perhaps Snape thinks that um, he he told them, hey, you better not come around here no because more. Because Dumbledore really keeps Snape out of the loop. I mean, if he tasked, and maybe because he doesn't truly believe Snape all the way, because he tasked him with protecting him, yet he doesn't tell him, oh, just so you know. No, I don't know. I can't say Harry that. Harry has an invisibility cloak. I can't say that Dumbledore doesn't <laughs> can doesn't trust around. Snape. Because we but know through Snape. everything. But we, know, but we know through Snape's memories how desperate he was and he agreed to do it then why wouldn't he have said hey harry has an invisibility cloak curl's acting really weird um can you please just like hyper monitor and maybe that's here's, what snape was doing here's here's the easy answer because dumbledore knows that harry has to go on this path and he cannot be stopped by snape he cannot be stopped by mcgonagall he can't he, he has to make this uh he has to make this journey. This is the journey to Mount Doom, mm -hmm. right? Um, for the for for you Lord of the Rings nerds, that journey has to happen because of the growth that will happen. And again, the text suggests that this is the case because all of a sudden the mirror of Erised is over here. Yeah. Well, and, that's Dumbledore's. Yeah, and 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 knowing like yep. knowing that Harry had this Knows encounter how to make with it the mirror work. of Erised. Yes. Like, come on, man. So basically, 
Dumbledore is hiding. I don't know. Maybe he's taking a swim with the mermaids in the lake right now. He's hanging out with Fox somewhere. And he's got his his uh his earphones in. Yeah. And he's literally listening to Kelly Clarkson. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's doing. Kelly maybe maybe he's actually just in the kitchen. He's got his Bose headphones on. Let's have that. So he's and he's just eating cake. <laughs> the noise what canceling. Doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And he's dancing. Yeah. Oh yeah. And Fox is flying. <laughs> and, and Fox knows. Fox like listen. If he really needs our help, you know, yeah. I'll go. And, and I'll check him there's out. There's a note I'll on the door that book. says BRB. You know, and, yeah. he, and you know McGonagall's knocking on the door and he can't hear nothing because he's got his bows on. Maybe all of this time, maybe he's actually not getting messages from the ministry ever. That's just his secret way of sneaking to the kitchens <laughs> to eat cake. Oh, look at that. I got another message. Uh, Me and Kelly. I mean, <laughs> fudge. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a date. <laughs> You and your falsetto kills me. Okay, can we move to chess? Oh, yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Okay, fine. So Dumbledore knows, and he's sitting in the kitchens listening to Kelly Clarkson, and he knows that these kids know how to get through everything. Oh, Kelly Clarkson. I mean, you're going to have to get that sound bite because I'm going to find Kelly Clarkson songs that now go along with all of these Dumbledore things. Oh, absolutely. Um... (laughs) Give you on. Is it no? Wait, that's a different. Note. What's what's the like? What was that ballad that came out when it was her like American Idol breakthrough? I have no idea. It's is it one moment in time? Da, na, 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 na. Is that it? I have no idea, oh, Marvin. Blake, where are you with your pop references to the early two thousands? <laughs> You're letting me down. So they play chess, <clears throat> and thank goodness that Ron gets to have his moment. You know, in so many of the movies, I feel like the Ron heroic moments, the the moments that paint Ron in a good light did not make it. You know, Ron became the humorous person, the one that gave us the insight into the wizarding world. Everybody on the on the chats are saying a moment like this. Yes. Yes, that's what it is. Right? Oh, a moment like th- is is that how it goes or am I singing something different? Some people wait a lifetime. Oh, see, I already know. Uh, okay, a that'll. Moment like this. Yes. Okay. Oh, Something. sorry. That's a Marion Blake okay. commandment. Yes. I can't sing. Okay. Thank you. That will come into into play at some point. Um, so we get, of course, the wizard's chess, and Ron just automatically takes the lead, knowing of. I mean, the the kids even say like Ron's better at us than this, and it's something that's pretty cute because, um, it's they the they. they compliment each other frequently sure. in this yeah. you know they, they compliment each other about Hermione being so clever and about Ron being great at chess and I love the fact that Ron takes the the the, the role of being the knight the knight is the person <laughs> actually sorry they do not compliment Ron Ron actually says in pure Ron fashion, now don't be offended or anything, but neither of you are that good at chess. <laughs> I like that I just rewrote it in my head that they were complimenting him, but really it's Ron calling out the truth. Oh, <clears throat> Sorry. No, so Ron takes the, the, the takes the mantle of being a knight. Now, yes. <clears throat> a knight is someone, is a, is a med- medieval hero who does things for the sake of doing them because it is right. It is sacrificial. It is someone that has a creed. It is someone that lends his hand to his uh, to his master, to his to his liege, uh, and sacrifices himself for his liege. And I just find that so incredible because Ron, for this entire time, has done something that he's wanted to stand out. This entire time, he wants to be the guy. Yet, he lets Harry be the guy. He sacrifices himself for Hermione and Harry to go forward. And, and and this comes from a kid that wants to be the guy because he's always been overlooked. He's always been overlooked by his family, by his brothers, by his mother, by his father. And finally, he's got, a, uh, he's got an opportunity to do something. And he says, no, 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 I got it. I understand the value of playing uh, playing a role. I understand the value of, of being part of something that's bigger than me. And that, too, within at least the text of this book, is a fantastic arc for, for Ron. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, there's a little... He steps forward as a knight, which doesn't make sense to me. Why? Knights I, can't step forward. <laughs> 
Um, wait, uh, no, they can't. Well, Knights I mean, they make can. An L. Yeah, well, in the L, you go forward. You can do you can do one step forward. No, he can't. Sure, you can. You can go one step forward. Not as knights. Knights have to do an L shape. Yeah, so you can go one step forward in the L shape. You can go one step forward and and over and three over or three up and one over. But it says he just stepped forward. Is it t- stepping forward like I'm stepping forward? I'm the knight. I'm just saying that that ne- that probably is fixed in later editions. <laughs> Fair because enough. Because. That's not how a knight moves. <laughs> but of course, you're right. He sacrificed. We move on. See you later, Ron. We'll see you in a little bit. Um, and then we, of course, get to Snape's trial, I guess, which yeah, the is potions. all of these different potions, which Hermione figures out. Whenever I've read this, I try to figure it out, and you can't. You can't figure out no. this riddle you don't because, see it. yeah, because you can't see the short and the tall one. So you don't know which one's of the order. And the other thing that always astounded me is that, okay, if Quirrell just went through this, yes. of, of course Quirrell would have figured it out. Wouldn't he have just mixed them up? Or couldn't you? Or if the one that Harry has to drink only has a little left, like why wouldn't Quirrell have just drank it all? Because because maybe he needed to come back for some particular reason. Ooh, you never know. Yes. So he left enough for him to get back one more time. So yeah, okay, I dig it. So there he goes. Hermione says, you know, he tells Hermione, "You need to go back." B- before we continue, yeah. I love the fact that Hermione. It takes a Muggle to figure this out because she's not a muggle well i'm sorry she's muggle born well you know what i mean it takes someone who grew up in the muggle world to figure this out (laughs) because the best wizards don't use logic and that's one of the reasons why oh i dig it that's one of the reasons why i think snape does this because because i feel like potions is something that a lot of wizards probably have a hard time with and because wizards just don't use logic they don't have to use logic they got magic what the hell is the point so the fact that it took Hermione to do this is really cool. Can I give you a little insight into our lives? Our little lass who is five years old, who's listened to this audiobook plenty of times, she came upstairs today devastated. Or it was downstairs, it was in the living room, and she said, Mom, am I a muggle? <laughs> and I was like, y- yes, yes, little lass, you are. And she said, but my parents are wizards. And I just want to be wizard born. Oh. And I was like, oh, honey. No! And I said, baby, you can be a wizard. And she said, I keep swishing my wand, <laughs> seeing when Guardian Leviosa, nothing's working. I'm just a muggle. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, bless her heart. Bless her plastic wand. So Hermione, the smartest wizard of their age, knows the potions, figures out which one she has to um, drink to to leave to make sure that she's okay. And then Harry goes in. Uh, He walks forward. Hold on. Before we continue, there's something that happens here, too. The trio... You know, take the lead in their particular in their particular ways. Yeah. You know, uh, Harry is the one who takes the lead in getting the key because of his Quidditch skills. Mm-hmm. Ron takes the lead in the um, in the uh, the chess because of his chess his wizarding skills, like his his knowledge of the wizarding world. Hermione takes the lead with the potions because of her logic, but also she takes the lead with the Devil's Snare because she's well read. She pays she attention. Pays attention. <laughs> Uh, and but it also highlights the fact that she's still not from this wizarding world. She I would still have relies on the idea of wood to create fire. Yes, all of these things are coming together, and they all show how they not only benefit each other in this friendship, but that their friendship is one uh, that is based on trust. Yeah, like they make fun of each other a little bit, and and there are some great comedic moments. But for the most part, when one of them steps forward, the other two say. I trust you. Mm-hmm. This is what we're going to do. And I believe you. Like Harry says, all right, are you sure? Are you yep. sure that this is the one? And she says, yes. Oh, and he's like, okay, boom, done. Yep. Like, I I just find that remarkable in, in, in how this trio of friends grew it grew together and how um, the, the dynamic that the author creates for these characters complement each other in such a way that makes them viable characters. And then we end the chapter with... There was already someone there, but it wasn't Snape. It wasn't even Voldemort. 
and it, this chapter right here, you can't not go into the next no, one. No, you have to. Like go when to you're the next reading one. it, you're like, oh, "Okay, I need to know what's going on." Yep. You're you're sitting there clueless on your first read. You read that last sentence and you're like, "What? Yep. Is it Dumbledore? Who is it?" Is it... Because that would have been logical to think. It could have been Dumbledore because all of a sudden he was just gone. He was just missing. Though, if you went to the next page... His cake all over his face? Yeah. <laughs> Still got his AirPod in. <laughs> <sighs> oh, man. Um, one other thing that I really noticed about this, too, about these trials, I find myself really liking the last chapter and this chapter, even though there's a lot... Yes. of logic jumps and yes. there's a lot of plot that we're just plotting through I like it because it transitions us from the wondrous world of Harry Potter mm. to something that's a little bit more mature something yeah. that is a little bit more dark something Danger. That, that, that portends bad things for our power trio that yeah. that, that the, the story of Harry Potter will be turning more mature as time goes mm -hmm. along. And, and, and it shows it in this text from the first trial, like from the first thing. Uh, fluffy, three-headed dog, playing yeah. music, he falls asleep. Like, that's cute. Yeah. Like, that's wizardy and yada yada. And then they go to the devil's snare. It's like, okay, yeah, make fire. Oh, wood, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then it's more cutesiness with the keys mm -hmm. and like getting the keys. And then all of a sudden things turn. They turn to the wizarding chest and Ron, Ron having to sacrifice himself. The troll that's in there that's beat up. And then all of a sudden Harry and Hermione have to do these potions that could kill them. Yes. And they got to walk through fire. Yep. And that will all lead to what we know is the Voldemort. Mm -hmm. Each sequential test gets that much hotter and darker. And I find hotter that. Hotter and darker. Oh, that's going to be the new shirt. Hotter and darker. Yes! Yes, yes, yes. Bam! Just like that. A winner! I like it. That's what we're doing. Um, so I, I just like how these things keep growing. Whereas Anna Ashley on Facebook says you need to make a t-shirt or mask with Dumbledore with his AirPods in and Fox next to him or on his shoulder. Oh, I'm, I'm in on that too. I mean, maybe, maybe some cake on there too. I mean, no, it just looks sloppy. Yeah, that's Unless true. he's holding a piece of cake. <laughs> I could do that. I could, I could make something like that okay. happen. Um, so yeah, that's that. That's, that's the end. Um, what do you think? Oh, different perspective. Different perspective. Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. What do you got? Holy cricket, you're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger, and you are? Hermione Granger, for reals. Oh, okay. Okay, so here she is. Like you were saying, I mean, this is a huge, huge step for Hermione, who came in friendless, um, really um, emotionally all set with <laughs> Harry and Ron because of how they made her feel, and through these difficult situations, um, she's gained this bond with them and has actually come to this great understanding where you know she does care about her studies and she's able to help them. And yet at that Gryffindor part of her is a thirst. Mm -hmm. It's a thirst to be brave and to help people out. And as much as her desire to do well in her studies and her fear of being expelled holds her back, um, her desire to help Harry and help the greater good of wizards is even more so. And it really mm -hmm. takes Harry saying, like, Voldemort killed my parents. No matter what, I'm going to get him. And mm -hmm. that's when she and Ron, of course, say, like, oh, it snaps them back into it. That this, li this is life or death. And I just like you said, I think that it was very interesting that she just automatically in her time of fear thought of wood being necessary for fire, mm -hmm. that that is what she's known forever. So many times, those of us, when we're in pain or when we're scared, you know, we want our mom. We want things from our childhood. We want to be comforted. Maybe when we're really sick, we'll watch a movie that we knew from earlier on in life. So it's, it, it's to me, it's like, of course, that's what she would think. That's That is her comforting. That is her old. Um, and then the fear that she has when Ron has to sacrifice himself. This is like the first glimmering of their relationship. Yeah. You know, that there's this admiration, but also fear for him for 
being hurt. Yeah, if you squinted at it, yeah, I think you could see something that was there. When he sacrifices himself, she screams, oh, no! You know, the whole thing. And she flies on a broom to try to catch this key, which flying is not something that Hermione is no, good at no. whatsoever. Not great, Bob. And yet, when it comes down to it, for this final bit... Not you know, great, the Bob! Potions, she is so sure, and she says brilliant. Like, she is excited. Yeah. Yes, they know that they're potentially facing Voldemort. Yes, they know that a lot of these tasks could have already killed them. She's literally looking at vials that contain poison, mm -hmm. and she says brilliant because she knows it so clearly. Yep, yep. She knows it so clearly that she is able to tell her best friend, you can drink that one, and I have faith in you. You know what I mean? She lets Harry go. There's a lot of people that wouldn't have let him do it. You know, let, let's sip it half and half. Or how about I just wait here for you? Um, but she trusts her friend enough. Yep. And knows that he's right, that he needs to go forward. Well, it's time for the mail. Now, we don't have any particular emails as of this moment. Uh, nobody sent any. That, And that's totally fine. But I know we have a cabillion people in the live as we are talking about this. So I'm going to play the music. And this is when you guys have your opportunity to give us some questions that you have on your brain. Oh, Miles here. All right, so uh, again, if you guys are, you do want to participate in the mail section of the Potterverse, you always can. Just go to uh, your your email server and just type in maryandblakemedia at gmail.com and let us know the questions that you got. Uh, whatever it is, it's not like trivia necessarily, but it's just something that is personal that it's just kind of dorky and you want to talk about. For example, Blake, if you had to put a task up to stop someone from taking the, the Sorcerer's Stone, what would that be? Oh, that's a good question. Mm, that's know. a good question. What would it be? Mm. What would it be? I would have to make it like some trivia thing. That's what I was thinking you were going to say. I would have to be some trivia thing, like tell me who the 1837 Quidditch World Cup champions were. Nice. They, like, they don't got Google. They can't figure that out. <laughs> They'd be like, sorry, it. bro. You can't, you can't do it. Awesome. It, so it's magical. Yeah. It's got magic in it, mm -hmm. but it's not like overly magic where they, somebody could just rely on their magic to solve it. They'd have to actually know it. Because here's the question. Is Dumbledore and his team making it so any of them could get through it? Any of those professors? Or is it something that only Dumbledore thinks himself he can get through? I don't know. Good good uh, trivia. I would, thought it Thanks. would be something trivia. How about you? Do you, you, do you have one that would uh, work for you? Mine, I think would go along the same lines of the Goonies. I think I would have a piano of bones and I would have some really creepily written music and they'd have to play the music or sing. But it would have to be something musical. Pitches of power! Pitches of power! <laughs> you know what kills me? You want to know what kills me in the Goonies? It's our time down here. That's one of my favorite lines. Sorry. But one of my, the thing that kills me is like, I can't tell if it's A sharp or B flat. <clears throat> That's the same note. <laughs> hold on, hold on. You get another one, too. No! Go ahead. And they would be written in completely different areas on the musical staff. She could have said, I can't tell if it's B sharp or B flat. That would have made sense on the musical staff because it's a little blurry. <laughs> but to say, I can't tell if it's A sharp or B flat doesn't mean anything because it's the same note. Oh, goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Okay, we got some questions here coming up. Uh, let's see. Hillary asks, uh, which task, Mary, do you think you'd be best at? Of the ones that were here, mm -hmm. I think I would have been best at the troll. But the troll's already knocked out. Oh, well, like if he wasn't, not, I mean, obviously that's why I would have missed at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if it was knocked out, I think I could have bested a troll. Okay. All right. Mine would be the chess. I feel like I'd be in on the chess. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yep. For me, it's like once my adrenaline's pushing, phew, hold on tight. I'm a, I'm a Taurus. All right. Victoria says, why does why does Dumbledore's D man say he tr oh Dumbledore say he trusts Hagrid with his life when obviously Hagrid gives away all the secrets that could cost many lives? I Mary? think because Hagrid only talks to Harry. I think if Hagrid... No, he talks to random dudes, giving them dragon You're legs. Right. You're right. I mean, Dumbledore doesn't have the best... 
<sighs> yeah, Harry's much better at reading people. Dumbledore isn't. Let's be real. Dumbledore's BFF slash love interest was mm, Grindelwald. Grindelwald yeah. And Dumbledore let Voldemort into school. Not great, Bob. Kept him there for a while. And Dumbledore let Hagrid get expelled. Uh, yeah. Dumbledore doesn't have the best read on people. No, not so much. But Harry Potter does. She also asks, why does Ron's skill with chess not translate to being generally clever and skilled with strategy later? I, I will... Oh, sorry, oh, go, no, go. Take, no, no, you take it. You take I it. just think that Ron has played chess for years upon years upon years upon years with his older brothers yep. and was expected to be at the same skill level as his older brothers. Yep. So he's had tons of practice with that. It's like he spoke French his entire life. He'd be excellent at French. It, it, it's like book smart versus street smart. Just because you're book smart doesn't mean you're street smart. Agreed. And vice versa. And they don't always equal. So. I picture the Weasley family having like chess tournaments. Oh, totally. Especially on the holidays. Yeah. Oh, where it's like, that's what you do. That's what you do. And, and, you get and that's the, why at you, Christmas holiday, he took it out. Like, this is the tradition. Yeah, this, is, this is what we do. And the yeah. winner gets like extra dessert. Yes. Or maybe you get like the extra sweater. Or you get a bed. Because I don't know if they had enough beds for all those. When all the boys come home from break. Or you get blankets. No, you got a bed, but I doubt that you got blankets. Really? Yeah. I I feel like they would have blankets, but not enough beds. Like someone would have to crash on the couch. Uh, That might be be the case. Maybe you get to come out of like the convertible bed to like a normal bed. Like Charlie's like, I'm totally going to win it. And Ron's going to have to sleep (laughs) (laughs) in the crib. Yeah. (laughs) Ginny's old crib. <laughs> All scrunched up. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Love it. Love it. All right. Uh, Ellen says, do you think Quirrell would have inspired Harry to do Doc Oz if he wasn't being possessed by Voldemort? I don't. I don't think Harry would have wanted to learn d- the dark arts because of what happened to his parents. I don't think he would have been inspired to be like, I want to learn them all. But like, there is part of Voldemort that's in Harry. So is th- is there something that would push him there? Um, maybe. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Because, you know, like, Voldemort does has this does have an effect on Harry. We see that in Order of the Phoenix. Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's, an, there's a valid argument to be made there that he could be pushed that I way. I mean, but let's be real. When he leads Dumbledore's army, it's with knowledge of the defense against the dark arts. Sure. So, yes. Out of all the defense against the dark arts teachers, Rebecca asks, who would you be, Mary? I would be Lupin. You absolutely would be Lupin. Give oh my God. The Here's the chocolate. Go get him. Ridiculous. Leave me alone at night. <laughs> <laughs> and I know who you'd be. Yeah, you, Snape. you don't even have to say it. You don't even have to say it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you got any more? Hillary says if Dumbledore did know and was preparing Harry, do you think he instructed the professors in what tasks to create so that it would be difficult enough to stop an intruder but simple enough for an 11-year-old? Well, see, that's hard because how would it be simple enough for an 11-year-old to figure out but hard enough for someone who's an intruder that, to not be able to get in? That's, that's one of the problems is that, like, yeah, 11-year-olds figure this out. I don't think that he instructed them how to do it, but I feel like he knew what to do. Because remember... Hagrid says only me and Dumbledore know how to get past Fluffy, so Dumbledore okay. has got Dumbledore has got to get the in, so he knows what to do, so that he can potentially prep. Yes, potentially prep Harry okay. for the things that he needs. Because I feel like any of the professors, once they understood how to get past Fluffy, could have finished everything else. Uh, that's potential. Snape definitely could have gotten through all of that, aside from Fluffy. Um, do you think that Dumbledore, Patricia, Patricia asks, uh, knows that Quirrell is possessed by Voldemort? He has his inklings. Yes, I think he, um, I think he does know. I think he has suspicions. Whether or not he knows that Voldemort is on Quirrell's head, I think that's yet to be seen or yet to be talked about. But he certainly knows that something's up with Quirrell. And Melissa Carolyn says a TikTok dance nowadays would be simple for an 11-year-old, but not for an adult. So who knows? Maybe the tasks were relative to TikTok. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, no, I can't. Whatever. No, 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 no. Thanks. Macarena was pretty much I all I, I can do. I can't do the floss. Never mind TikTok dance. Oh, you definitely can't do the no, floss. Yeah, no. Well, on that note, friends, we are going to wrap things up for this—the sixteenth chapter, the second to last, the penultimate, if you may, of 
the chapters. And then next episode is going to be chapter 17, The Man with Two Faces, where we will cover that chapter. We will not be doing a recap of the entire book next episode. Next episode, we'll just focus just on that chapter. Yes. And then we will do a book recap a week from now. Or, or a mailbag. I, yeah. I kind of like the idea of a mailbag we'll more than a book out. recap. We're going to figure that if somebody, out. If somebody wants to do a book recap, just listen to the damn podcast. Oh, sorry. Listen to the podcast. You have so much editing to do. I know. I'm I messed that You're up. not even going to do it because I know you. I, you have I, to fix that first one, though. I, I, I will. Thank I definitely you. will. All right. Uh, then we're going to do the movie. Fun, fun question. What? If you are listening or watching and you do have youngsters who like Harry Potter and who listen to this podcast, if you do think anything needs to be tweaked a little bit in regards to our language... Let us know. We're, of course, going to continue to talk about the themes, talk about the fact that someone really bad is trying to kill little kids. <laughs> but well, Yeah, like there are certain um, things you can't avoid. But if there are certain things that you're like, oh, I can't let my kid listen to this anymore, let us know because we are trying to make sure that this is family-friendly as we do appreciate that families are reading the Potter series together, especially now in 2020. Sure, sure. All right, you ready to close this bad boy out? Yes. Let's do it. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this, the latest episode of the Potterverse. You can, of course, support the show by going to jointhenerdclan.com for as little as $2 a month. Your help contribute to make sure this is all possible. Um, it does take a lot to run the studio, the websites, and all of the things considered. So thank you all so much for who those of you who are patrons at jointhenerdclan.com. And if you want to join... That's all you need to do is head to that website. And thank you for all the reviews, by the way. We put out a call to action there, and we got seven reviews in one day uh, for, for everybody. So but for everybody, everybody between number 50 and number 60, if you provide us a written review, one person in number between number 50 and 60 will get one item of their choice from the Mary and Blake store. Who knows? Maybe it might be the, uh, the Dumbledore Who thing. Who knows? Oh, yes. Oh, by the way. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? Oh, God, no. Nope, nope, this isn't this, this is not gonna work. Okay. Wait, are we talking still? What's going on? Yeah, oh no. You know the bed feels warmer. You talk sleep. Uh, oh yeah. Oh no, you, you gotta get you gotta hear it. You gotta hear it. You know I dream in color. Oh yeah. This is how we're closing out this, this show. This is how we're closing out I this show. It. Yes. Hold on, let's let it ride. Facebook's gonna kick us off if we keep doing this and I talk over it. Facebook, I do not own the music rights. I promise. Don't come after me, oh, here Mark. Here comes. Here's music the big part. What doesn't kill you makes you What? Stronger. That's right. <laughs> That's right, Harry Potter. Little 11 year old oh, boy. Oh, yeah. His voice hasn't even changed yet. Doesn't even have <laughs> hair under his armpits. No. But you got this. So you it doesn't it. kill you, makes you stronger, Harry. Drink that possible poison. Get stuck in those vines. Possibly be knocked out by a queen without a face and a chessboard. <laughs> maybe maybe meet Voldemort. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, we'll see. If uh, it doesn't kill you, though, man, I'll tell you what. It's make you stronger. That's right. Kelly told me. All right. So on that note, my name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake. And Mischief. I, oh. Oh, I, I was going to say, maybe I'll get some cake. I don't know. Uh, we'll be, we got to celebrate Dumbledore. I didn't know there was going to be cake tonight. Well, we, we didn't, I didn't know there was going to be cake. Hold on. All right. Mischief managed. <laughs> Gotta turn it off, Blake. Facebook's going to kill me. All right. Thank you. That's Thank you, guys that. and gals and everybody for, for checking this on out. We truly appreciate you. Listen, if you're not yet in my Minute with Mary uh, group, search the hashtag Minute with Mary. I want you to join. Whether you wear makeup or not, I want you to come on and join. I hang out there. I share tips and tricks. It may. What are you? What are you? What are tips you? and tricks. <laughs> okay. I know. It sounded like a little something else. Just, 
Sh- I don't share that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. The water is fine. Oh, goodness. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Thanks for hitting that share button. Remember, it's not too late to hit the share button below. Um, if you did share, you can write Expecto Patronum in the comments below. Blake and I will shout you out, so we'll give that one more minute. But you can always hit that share button because your friends will watch this from the beginning. You could share in your stories, on your wall, um, in your Facebook groups, or if you belong to any kind of Potter or nerd-themed groups, that would be great. But as I said, you can share just to your local group. There's Potter fans everywhere. Yes, absolutely. So many Potter dogs out there. And, uh, yeah, everybody, thank you very much. Ellen says, I got my time zones confused by an hour because she's Australian. And she ended up missing most of the podcast, but she thinks she came in just at the right time. Oh, you did, Ellen. You did. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, All right, well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Again, remember that we'll be doing the next chapter uh, on Monday. Monday, 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 Monday. And then perhaps we'll have a mailbag episode for that Wednesday, and then we'll be doing an episode for the movie in general. And that will be really in line with what Mary and I do uh, in how we handle podcasts and, and, and everything. So I look forward to that. I look forward to having a good general review of the film, what works, what doesn't. And if it's a viable adaptation of the book, just off the top of your head, Mary, right now. Yes. Is it a viable adaptation of the book? Yes. You really? You think so? I do. Okay, good. All right, excellent. <laughs> well, we'll do Do that. they miss things? Yeah, betcha. But do I think some of the other movies... Do not adapt as well? Yes. Do I think that the other movies are fun and exciting to watch? Yes. Yeah. But as an adaptation goes, I think that the first movie is a very magical, fun experience. And you understand the friendships and you understand the scope of what the author has laid out for us as a major conflict. Yes. Yes. Do you think it's a good movie in general? Yes. Okay. Good. All right. So we're Anything gonna... from the trolleys? <laughs> so we're going to go into that uh, like that. All right. Well, uh, everybody, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know uh, in the comments. And do make sure you get yourself uh, one of those reviews in there so you get a chance to win one of your... A written review. A written review to get yourself a chance to win one uh, a free item from the Mary Ann Blake store of your choice, whatever it is. It's up Ooh. to you. So there it is. We got ca- a kabillion things Swish and there. flick. So, so many swish and flicks. That's what we need to get for me. And I was running out of shirts. Yes, absolutely. <gasps> I'm so excited for you too, Tracy. Tracy, let me know if you need to borrow a DVD. <laughs> <laughs> because we live like five minutes away from each other. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I Bye, will, uh, everyone. Thank see you, you soon. so much. Bye. If I, if I can find my mouse. I don't know where it is. There it is. There, there it, it is. Goes. Bye, Bye, guys. Bye.